everybody, it's Carla with Cobweb Corner and welcome to Floss Tube number 19. It is Thursday, July 11th, 2019. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back to watch some more. And if you're watching for the first time, welcome. And I hope you'll consider subscribing. Um, not a lot happened this week. Uh, we were mostly just stayed at home and we had some nice weather. We had friends over uh, Saturday night for uh, steaks. My husband makes the best steaks. He buys these great big huge bone-in cowboy steaks that are literally like this thick, uh, two to three inches thick. Um, and then he slow cooks them on our pellet grill. And then after they've cooked for, I don't know, hour 45 minutes or an hour and 45 minutes or something like that then he puts them on a real hot regular grill and sears them and we had steak and corn on the cob and cornbread and salad and it was so good um other than that i didn't do a whole lot i tried to get some running in and thanks to the cooler weather i was able to do a little bit better and today i went for a run and for the first time this year was able to go a full five kilometers without walking. And I am way behind where I should be at this time of year. I we got a late start because of all the rain and I was starting to think that I was never gonna get uh, a full 5K in without walking. But today we did it. It just makes such a big difference when the weather is a little bit cooler and the humidity isn't so bad. So tonight I'm getting ready to go to Biloxi, um, Mississippi. And if you've been following the weather, there is a tropical storm and possible hurricane, Hurricane Barry. So what was supposed to happen was I was, I was flying down with my girlfriend to go to Biloxi on a charter flight. And my daughter works down there, is working down there for, uh, I think she been there for at least three weeks now. She lives in Huntsville, Alabama, but she has to go to the NASA facility um, down in, uh, I think that's in Louisiana, and she stays in Slidell. And Slidell isn't very far from Biloxi. So the whole plan was that my girlfriend and I would fly down there and uh, stay on the coast, and she would come down on Saturday night and see us and stay overnight and then we we're going to do a mom and daughter spa day i have massages booked and we were thinking about getting a cabana at the pool and all this stuff and then hurricane barry came onto the scene so my daughter texted me yesterday and she said we've been ordered to go home they don't want any employees here uh, until the storm is done so i am leaving tomorrow which is today thursday so I won't be there when you come down. And I'm like, really? And I mean, it wasn't her fault. She, you know, they don't, won't let her stay in the hotel that she's in and stuff. And I want her to be safe. So I was pretty sure that our flight would get canceled anyway. And we wouldn't go because if we cancel, my friend and I are each out $300. So we didn't want to cancel. So right now it looks like Biloxi is going to miss the brunt of the, uh, bad uh, hurricane type weather and is just going to get a ton of rain. So I looked on the forecast. I'll see if I can put a, a photo of the forecast for Biloxi. It's like 90 hours of thunderstorms with no break. <laughs> so um, we decided that if our flight goes, we're going and we will just do indoor things and um, go have, maybe watch it, go to a movie and get some good food and do some shopping and just have some girlfriend time. So I'll let you know next week how it all turned out and whether we even are able to go or not if they don't cancel our flight tomorrow. But right now it is still on. I did no stitching today, this week at all. And since I'm the founder of the Stitch and Move group, where we're supposed to encourage each other to stitch and move more, I feel a little bit guilty that I didn't stitch this week. So instead of sharing my uh, works in progress, which have not changed since floss tube number 18, I'm going to do a product review. And the product re review is for um, an item called the, uh, the company is called the Floss In. And I first saw this on um, Michelle's Stitchy Bendy channel. 
If you haven't watched her floss tube channel already, uh, she's just amazing. And she did a review on these and I was watching it and I was really intrigued. So I bought a small one. I'll show them to you just a bit. I bought a small one and I've been using it now for quite some time. And I wanted to use it before I reviewed it. And I am completely sold on these things. So what the idea is, is you transfer your floss to these little spools and they're handmade. Um, they, they make these in their family. And so one color of floss would go on this spool. And the first one I bought is a 10 pocket floss in. And so it's gonna be shiny. Okay, there we go. So each spool has a color and it has its own, own pocket. So this one holds 10 colors and um, the project I'm working on, I think has 14. So, but I wanted to try, I wanted to use this and see what I thought. So I have the other four colors just on regular uh, floss cards, but each one has a pocket that it goes into. And then she sends these cards so that you can write, I put the symbol and the floss color um, number on it. And then above each one is a pocket. And the, what it's designed to do is to hold your floss so that it comes out in one straight, you can see it turning and you, you cut, clip the length of floss that you want and then you separate your strands and any other strands that you have left, like if you only need one or two strands, you put those in the pocket above and then use that next before you clip anymore. What appealed to me about this was having the single strand of floss right there and no tails hanging down or, you know, big wads of floss anywhere. And it did take me a while to wrap the colors onto the bobbins and there was only 10, but you know, that's just like putting your floss on a card. And I took floss off of my cards in order to get this, uh, this one ready. And I love it. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna get the, uh, get the uh, floss organizer that I have been using in the past. Okay, so um, I have been using the floss organizer by Peiko. And I really like this too. It comes with a card and I have these in my Amazon shop. It comes with a card and you put the symbol on and then you um, cut your floss to length and you store each color on these little um, teeth that are there. And I really like this too. I like that I my symbol is right there. I don't have to refer back to my pattern. And then you just would lift off your floss. Let's see, lift off your floss, cut what you need, and then put it back on. And I really like this. I have two or three of these, and um, I was pretty sold on these. But you still end up with kind of a mess here and your floss you have to kind of pre-cut your floss to the length that you might want otherwise you're putting a whole skein on and um, taking it off and trying to figure it out there so they kind of suggest that you take what uh, the amount of floss that you might need and then cut that to you know whether you do 18 inches or whatever whatever your standard length is and then use that up and then add more if you need it and this works great and it fits in my project bag, but it's still just kind of messy. And then when I'm done, I got to figure out what to do with the leftover floss. Do I put it back on a card or in a bag or, or how do I do that? And when I started using the floss in, it just all that little kind of mess just went away. And this one, all of them, I can fold this and put it in my project bag like this, or I can roll it up and then she has a little um, elastic band there so I can make it into a circle. And her detail and her, um, first of all, I love the fabric on this, but her, the quality is just really, really good. So these are a nice sturdy vinyl. 
They've got the little little tiny um, house sticker that reinforces where the thread comes through so that that won't tear. And then all of everything just fits perfectly. And then over here, she's got a little place, uh, kind of a felt that you can either put ex little your little orts or you can use it as a thread keeper. And then she's got a pocket for her for your scissors. And I've got my uh, little tube of needles in there right now. So, um, so I was using this one and I started looking at some of my other uh, projects that I want to start and things. And I thought I either need to decide whether to go for it and start transferring my things to these spools or just use this occasionally on small projects and I decided to go for it. So I ordered a second one. Um, they aren't inexpensive, but I think they're fairly priced for the amount of work that are that is in them. Um, this one is a 20 pocket and that you can get them all the way up to 100. So you could buy one that just has 100 colors and store your floss that way when you're not using it or for a very large large project. But this one is, first of all, look at that material, Unicorn Kitties, I love it. And this is just the same idea, except instead of 10 pockets, it's got 20. And again, it's got a place for your scissors. And this one's got a larger, sorry for the glare, larger area for either your orts or um, needles or whatever. And then with both of those, she also sent, like with this one, she sent a matching needle keeper. So, sorry. Boy, I don't know why my light is so bad today. I don't know if it's the material or what. So I got this too. And hi, Bo, you can come up if you want. Um, so in this latest one, I got the 20, 20 spools and... Uh, the little cards, paper pre-cut cards to number them in the thing. And then I went ahead and ordered 50 more spools so that I don't have to um, take a color off. Like if I change, if I do another project and I don't, and I want, and I need a spool for a new color, I don't have to take the floss off of one of the spools that I've wound and uh, so that I have enough uh, spools for my project. So, um, I, and now when I, when I'm done with my project, then what do you do with the spools? And I've been looking at, she has a, a cabinet on her site where she can store the spools standing up. But I think for now, I'll just put them in a small little, uh, one inch, one inch by three inch, I think they are, or one and a half by three plastic bag and put a label on with the floss number and um, store them that way for now until I can figure something out. So anyway, it's it's a pretty big commitment as far as uh, there's a little bit of investment and the work to get them on the spools, but I love them. I think she's just really on to something. She's got a, a few others. She's got a tool keeper and a couple other things and then Oh, and the other thing was for both of these, I ordered them on separate orders and for both of them, they were shipped within two days and they were not pre-made. So I, I chose a custom fabric and with, I, I think I had both of them within six days of ordering them. One of the first one, I think I had like four or five days after ordering it. So uh, just super good service. She responded to my emails uh, very quickly and um, I'm just really happy. And you can take your own fabric and send that to her too. Um, and they come in, I think, 10 pockets, 20 pockets, 30 pockets, I have 45 and 100. I don't know what all, what all they do. If I had a really large project, I, would, I think I would have multiple smaller. May, maybe I'd go as high as 45 or or something like that, but I'd have to think about it. And this one just folds up really flat and also has got the plastic, the elastic, the plastic, the elastic things if you wanna roll it up. So I'm I'm just completely sold on these. I'm gonna put, now um, I saw, like I said, I saw them first on um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy's Floss Tube channel 
and uh, she had just started using them but it was showing kind of what they were and that I was just wanted to buy right away but I'm gonna put the uh, link to her chant her video down below so you can see what she thought of them um, and that is where I saw them first was from Michelle so um, I I love them and I'll probably continue to buy buy more and uh, transfer I just like how I can pull that single uh, piece of floss off and not have I I like this too but it's just a mess and I have cats obviously which if you've been watching my channel for a while you know and the cats can't get into that I mean they can kind of play with the little part of the string that's uh, sticking out but they can't get into it and get cat hair all over it like they can with uh, this or if my floss is on a ring or something like that so that's my product review it's the floss in and uh, there'll be links below and if you uh, have one or if you have a, a unique way of storing your floss while you stitch not storing it permanently uh, then let me know down below so um, I'm gonna take a drink of my if you've been on my channel for a while I uh, also have a one of my segments is a business side of things and Today, I'm just going to talk about three things I like and three things I don't like about having my own business and working at home. Um, I was a computer programmer uh, for a large corporation. Actually, I started uh, with a couple small, small companies and then I ended up working at Rockwell Collins for nine years and I was a database uh, software engineer. and. I really enjoyed it and I was really good at it, but I always had this kind of entrepreneur spirit. And then my daughter got to the age where she could no longer go to after school daycare and we had to figure out what to do. And I told my husband, I'm like, I just, well, I had, and I had been selling cross stitch, uh, use cross stitch designs uh, be, during that time before, while I was still working. And I was spending every night, just hours every night, uh, listing things and, and trying to get them shipped and stuff. And I said, you know what? I just want to stay home with her after school and um, start my own business. And my husband was great. He said, go for it. So in 2003, I quit my job as a, a software engineer and started working at home full time. And three things that I like. First of all, I love working at home. Um, that's kind of a duh, but, uh, I have a, I was wor a little bit worried that I would not be disciplined and I maybe have the TV on and stuff, but I get up, my average day is I get up about 6.30, quarter to seven, and I'm working by 7.30 and I work until lunch. And then I work until my husband texts me and tells me he's going to come home. So it's usually about four o'clock. And then I work Saturday mornings. Um, tried I tried to ship orders that were placed on Friday on Saturday morning unless we're unless we're doing something that day and then I usually end up working a little bit on Sunday so I probably work I don't know 40 I probably work about 40 hours a, a week but I have so much flexibility if I want to schedule um, a doctor's appointment or if I need to run and get some groceries or if I want to go have lunch with my girlfriend then I can do that. Um, so working at home is is just really, really nice. Um, the other thing I love is um, I love the business side of things. I got my MBA from the University of Iowa um, while I was still a software engineer. And you know, you take all kinds of business classes and marketing classes and stuff. And I really like the numbers side of things and I like trying different things. So I like trying, let me try advertising here, or let me change this ad and, and see if that makes a difference. And now with all the, the social media, you know, of course, when I started, social media was not what it is today. And so now I'm doing floss tube and things like that. Um, and that whole, the whole marketing side, what, what website features should I have? Um, what payment, options should my customers have and how should I do my shipping should I use the US post office should I use uh, UPS what should I do so all of that is it's a lot of work and it, some of it's very time consuming but I really like that side of the business um, and then the uh, 
in line with the flexibility is vacation time. Sometimes I take five weeks vacation and I don't have to. I can. Work and with my cross stitch store, my I have always just put up a notice that said we're still open, but and you can order, and your order will ship when we get back on such and such date. So, like this trip that I'm taking this uh, weekend, if it goes, there's already a notice on our our um, site with a heads up, and it's that we'll be gone the 12th through the 16th, and if you place your order, um, then it'll ship when we get back. So sometimes nobody buys and sometimes people just shop like normal because especially as it gets to be Sunday or Monday, they're like, well, that's not so long. Um, Wait. What I don't like about working at home and having my own business, and surprisingly, one of the things I don't like is working at home by myself. Um, it's very isolating. I'm used to, I had, was used to working in a corporation and I had lots of friends and I'd always go to lunch with somebody and there, you know, there were activities and just, I, I was, I would taught, I supported my databases. So I was interacting with people all of the time. And here at home, so, you know, I can go, sometimes I can go five days and we live out in the country and I can go five days and not, and not leave the house. And the only person I talk to is my husband. So, and my cats, of course. Um, so there, there's been points where it's been almost too isolating and I have to force myself to, um, get out there and do more things. And going to the Nashville market this year for the first time was huge. Floss tube has really helped that. And I'm just making a personal effort to go have coffee or go have lunch, uh, and try to do some of those things that I would do if I were working in a regular business and not just a uh, home by myself. The other thing I hate that I are, well, I shouldn't say hate, but I kind of do is filing. So I am terrible. So I store my cross stitch books in filing cabinets. I have, I don't know, six, six or seven tall filing cabinets and they're stored by designer and then within designer, either by book number and if they don't have a book number, then they're stored alphabetically by name. And I'll go in and enter new new items, new charts into our database, and then I'm supposed to file them. And instead of filing them, I make piles and piles that I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'll file, tomorrow I'll file. I'll end up with four hours or five hours of filing. And what the worst part is, is when somebody orders something that's not filed, I have to go through all these piles and try to find it. And I'm sitting there telling me why, telling myself, why are you doing this? <laughs> you know, so I've made rules for myself, which all get broken. But like one of my rules was enter, enter 10 books, file 10 books, enter 10 books, file 10 books. And that'll work for about, you know, 10 books. <laughs> and then it's just so much easier to sit down and, and enter 20 or 30 books into my inventory and scan the uh, covers and stuff like that and get it uploaded to the to the website and then just take that pile of what I worked on and stick it in the back room where I can't see it. So it's just one of the tasks that is very mundane and um, I'm just I just cannot get disciplined to do it. Um, the other thing that I um, one of the, the third thing that is one of the most distressing for me or difficult, I don't to say distressing, but I get very overwhelmed at how much work I have to do and how much inventory I have and how spread, how thin I'm spread. Um, if you've watched before, you know, I actually have three businesses. I have cross stitch jewelry making and a jewelry supply shop. And um, it, right now, all of 2019, I've been focusing almost only on cross stitch. And I really wish that I had stuck with that back in 2003. I didn't start designing jewelry professionally until uh, about midway in uh, 2004. And I wish I had just stuck with cross stitch and really gave it my all. And that's what I'm doing now. But then I look at my jewelry stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with this stuff? Am I ever gonna make jewelry again? And I look at the amount of uh, cross-stitch books that I have waiting to be entered and I get pretty overwhelmed and I get 
stressed out and, and ang anxious about it. But then, you know, things work out and I just told my daughter that someday she's gonna have 10,000 cross-stitch books and, and uh, a few thousand beads that she just gets to um, figure out what to do with someday. So those are three of the things I like and three of the things that I, I don't like. So um, the advertising and stuff like that, I think I'll have some separate segments on, on uh, what I do and what I've done in the past for advertising. As far as one of the things that I mentioned that I like is figuring out what kind of features to have on my website. Two of the features that I just added are, um, and I'd like your opinion on them, is the first one is a smart search. And I just put this in a couple weeks ago and I'll insert a picture here to, or in a little bit to show you what it's, what it looks like. But basically you go to our website and there's a search box, of course. And as you type search, as you start typing in the search box, if it finds a product that has that word in the title, it, the search box will drop down and show you um, like the first six products that match that word in the title. So let's say you exactly knew that you wanted to buy, um, I don't know, um, a specific uh, like holiday delivery, or, or I think it's holiday delivery. Harvest Delivery by Plum Street Samplers. So you start, start start typing in the search box Harvest, and as you type Harvest, anything with the word Harvest in the in the title will start to show up as a drop down. And then as you continue typing and you say Delivery, it'll narrow it down to Harvest Delivery, and then you can just click it. You don't have to press Enter and wait for the search in that type of thing. Um, so I'm gonna I'll put a picture here of what that looks like. So on that one, I had typed in the word, started to type in the word Halloween. And I really like it because especially if you're looking for something um, specific and if it's in stock, then it'll show you show in that list. And if you don't want to use it or if you're doing a more broad search and you just want to see everything Halloween, then you just type Halloween as normal and press enter and the search results are displayed. So that's one of the new features. Another feature I just added about five days ago is... Um, a little pop-up window that, and this is the one that I'd really like your input on. It's a little pop-up window that says, um, uh, someone purchased a uh, harvest delivery at uh, four hours ago. Um, someone in uh, Swisher, Iowa purchased uh, such and such chart three days ago. So it's giving you that feedback of what other people are buying. And it's way down in the lower left-hand corner. It doesn't cover up your, your screen. You can just ignore it. Um, but there's all the, well, how frequently do I show them? Do I show them at all? Are people gonna get upset by having these little pop-ups? Um, but what I like about it as a buyer, I've seen it on other sites. And what I like about it is if it shows me something I'm interested in, I can just go down to that little box and click it and it takes me right to that product. So like we're having the stitch along in the stitch and move group for the chart, It's So Emma. So a lot of those have been popping up in that, in that little window and saying so-and-so bought It's So Emma. And then you see is another person bought It's So Emma or It's So Emma, um, So She Did. Um, that's the name of the chart, So She Did. And then, oh, a third person bought So She Did. And why is that after the you, third time you're like, well, what is it about this chart that so many people are buying it? And you can click on it, open it up and read about the chart. So I'll put a picture here of what that looks like. So those are two features that um, I've been playing around with in the last uh, week or so. Um, I think that's it for business news. I, I hope entered your inventory this week. I entered a bunch of needle nannies last week <clears throat> and then uh, tried to finish up some of the large wholesale orders that I got. So I want to share some of those with you. Ooh, sorry about that. I about <laughs> pulled my table over. Um, the first one is by My Big Toe and it's called The Prayer of St. Saint Francis. And a lot of the My Big Toe charts aren't so complicated, but this one is just beautiful. And this is the saying, um, 
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me uh, bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union in that. And I love this because before I got married, I used to meditate. And this was the um, saying or the prayer that I meditated to. So I had this memorized and I would meditate and repeat this uh, at least three times. And so I really, really like this, this saying. And it's just, the whole saying is just uh, just so, to me, how, how I would like to live my life. Um, so that's the Prayer of St. Francis by My Big Toe. Oh, here's Bo. This is Bordeaux. And she likes to be part of my video. She hasn't been in the, in the last uh, two or three, but we'll see how long she stays. Oh, she's down already. Um, the next one is Needleworker Sampler, uh, Proverbs 3113 by Cottage Garden. And that says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You can either come up or stay down. This is Vinnie the Vampire by Glendon Place. And this one comes with crystals. So it's got the crystal rondelles and some bicones, and those are included with the chart. Then I have a bunch of designs by, uh, designs by Lisa. I've been putting a lot, really stocking quite a few of uh, that publisher. This is Wish Upon a Starfish. This one's a, a not super complex chart. And this one's by Springberry Creek Designs and it's called Mittens Mittens. And the text down below says, where are my mittens? And it's the cat kind of destroying and playing with the mittens, which is also something my cats would do. Um, another one by Springberry Creek is Follow Me. And what you might not be able to see is the black cat is on the fence post kind of kind of in a like a hunting position and inside the eyes of the jack-o-lantern is a mouse and the mouse so the mouse is the one saying follow me then I've got um hospitality house by uh homespun elegance so it's got the tall sampler house and then the large uh pineapple which is the symbol of hospitality and then October by cross-eyed cricket and it's uh, more Halloween. So it's got Halloween symbols and it spells the word October. It's really cute. And I love this one by Blackbird Designs. It's Away We Ride. And it says, Away we ride till, till it's dark as pitch to find the home of the Wicked Witch. And I just really like that chart. Another one by Blackbird Design is Feast of Friendship. And then I have uh, Stitching Angel with Hoop by Ellen Morstro. Mor and there is a companion piece to this Stitching Angel with Thimble. And then this is the Sunny Side Sampler by the Drawn Thread. It's alphabet and it says, um, it's got the song, keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side, keep on the sunny side of life. And those words are along the top. And then it's got the alphabet along the bottom and then the big sunflowers. I really like that one too. Back in stock um, is the Mirabilia 25th anniversary booklet. And this came out, I think it was 2015. And it's got one design in it. It's got this design. And then it's just a, a few pages. I don't know if they're marked. Yeah, 18 pages. And each page, uh, the first page talks a little bit about uh, Nora Corbett. And then she talks about some of the designs, like some of the first designs she made and uh, why she why she did st some some of the stuff. So it's a picture of a design and then just a little paragraph by her talking about that design. And it's 18 pages and it comes with one chart. Um, 
And this, if you're a Mirabilia fan, this is a great thing to add to your collection. Then there are three charts by uh, Cottage Garden in the uh, ones, May's Lily of the Valley, June's Honeysuckle, and what's the other one? July's Delphinium. So there's July and May. and June, well, yes, June. Oh, and we have October's Marigold. Oh, I thought I only had three of those. And November's Chrysanthemum. Then more by Designs by Lisa. This is Oh My Dear. And there's a companion chart to this too. That's a fox, a red fox. And Sam and Sarah, this is Steampunk uh, Bumblebee. And this comes with some buttons, just a little packet of buttons to use as embellishment. It's really unique. And this is the Rorschach. I had to look up how to pronounce that. Um, so this is a, what do you see? So I can see an owl and a leaf and a heart and birds and some other leaves. So that's a really interesting, I don't know what I would call the eyes, maybe snowflakes. I don't know, there's a lot in there. And this one also comes with three little buttons, a star and two hearts. Then we've got Lily, uh, Lizzie Kate Chick Party. And there's a, here's one without the buttons in the middle. Nice colorful Easter one. And those also come with a packet of, a little packet of buttons. And Think Spring. I love the little chick holding the uh, umbrella on the top. Land That I Love. It says America, Land That I Love. And that's by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this one's by Sam Sarah. And it's called A Thing of Wonder. And it's got the snowman with the long um, stocking cap and a star and he's pulling the Christmas tree. And this one comes with a little embellishment packet. Um, it's, this is for his, the end of, this one's for the end of his stocking cap. It's got some beads to decorate the tree with and then a little carrot for his nose. It's really cute. And we've got the throwback checkerbird by Heart and Hand. And it's the same, it's one tiny design with two color options. And I restocked Have Faith by Country Cottage. These, I just love this entire series. This is um, Songbird's Garden number seven. And I wish I had time to just stitch all of those. The Wool and Flax Company by Plum Street Sampler. And nice things to the dog version of, um, it says, the reason I can't have nice things. And last week I showed you the cat. So there's a companion to that. The reason I can't have nice things. And this one is uh, Art of Simplicity by Designs by Lisa. And it says, master the art of simplicity and every day will be beautiful. And this is stitched in just two colors. And it's got that whimsical uh, butterfly really like that who loves you grandma does that's by designs by lisa uh winter on penguin pond got three penguins ice skating and say here comes santa these are all by designs by lisa freddie and his flakes you know it's almost time to start stitching for Christmas it's hard to believe I guess Halloween might be first but uh not gonna be too much longer and we're gonna have to start stitching for Christmas um Black Cat Society and the ride I like this one it's got the witches in a hot air balloon which you don't see very often and then um the black cat is decorating the hot air balloon and I think that's it. So that's it for new inventory um, that I entered. So next I wanna show you uh, some charts by 
a design a publisher that's been around for quite a while. I don't see much of their new stuff in my wholesale uh, catalog. So I'm not sure what the status is. I'm sure they're still around and maybe uh, I, I usually buy these from Hoffman and then every once in a while I get them in personal collections or stores that went out of business. Um, but it's pin um, out of, uh, I'm assuming China. I shouldn't say that without knowing for sure. Um, but their designs, their oriental designs are so pretty. This is Chinese dragon. Isn't that just amazing? It's full coverage chart. You could try to find a, a I don't know, I wouldn't, I was gonna say you could try to find a light blue fabric, but the way it goes to super dark here is just very dramatic. So that's Chinese uh, dragon. This is birthday blessing. And uh, another Chinese dragon and Chinese goddess of mercy. So you get two charts in this booklet. And these are uh, just nice, sturdy, sturdy booklets. Bird Park and Macaws. So much color in those bird feathers. This is um, Solver of Fruits and Vegetable Gang. Look at those little kid vegetables. Aren't they so adorable? And then it's got the regular um, basket of fruit. But I just think those are so cute. This one's been pretty popular. Chinese Blessing Fishes, a Qua Pond. A koi pond, sorry, koi pond. Qua would be French. Lakshmi. And this is Indian goddess of beauty, wealth, and pleasure. The Chinese god of wealth, and it's Sai Shen Ye. Probably not pronouncing that right. Isn't he cool? And look at the tiger. I love the tiger. And this one is Chinese goddess of mercy. Isn't she just beautiful? That one we already did. Oh, we've got some doubles. This one is cat and dog lovers. And Chinese blessing words, um, trying to see what they say. Doesn't give me the words. If I can find the words, I'll, I'll put it in the text. And this one is Hak Lok Siu. And the last one is Land of Paradise. Isn't that beautiful? With the cranes and the waterfall and the lily pads. So some of those are um, easier stitches, but most of them are, are pretty detailed in full coverage. Um, but I, I really like those and I, I don't see them much anymore. So I'll try to figure out what the status of that is. Um, once again, I have forgotten to draw the name of last week's winner. So I'm gonna pause here and do do that. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and you know, every every week I forget something and I write it down. I even wrote pick winner before video. So it didn't work. Last week's giveaway was Fox View by Plum Street Samplers. And the winner of that is Cynthia M. So Cynthia, please, uh, contact me. My email address is below and I need your shipping address and uh, I'll get that out to you. This week's um, giveaway is the Throwback Checkerbird by Hands On Design with the pre-made pillow by Adam Original. So I got a couple of these at market thinking I might carry them and I decided not to. And so you get the chart and this is the pillow right here that comes with it. So it's a pre-made pre pillow with uh, 
your fabric right there that you stitch on. So if you would like to um, win that giveaway, just say, I'd like to stitch the pillow. I'd like to stitch the pillow. And I will choose the winner um, right before floss tube number 20. So that's it. I'll let you guys know if my trip to Biloxi goes through or not. And I will see you next week, I hope. Have a great time and happy stitching. Bye.